Good morning from the very familiar Chessington World of Adventures. However, something different today as we are off on a VIP giraffe feed. We're going to giraffe feed it up. Now, we actually got free vouchers uh, when we renewed our annual pass. And I forgot about them for a few months and the boys reminded me that we should do it over the summer. Obviously it's summer. Much like last time when we visited, it is due to hammer it down with rain pretty much all day. So we are actually going to go in, we're going to go do the giraffe feed, we're really, really looking forward to that. Love the giraffes and we've been um, to some of the close encounter ones during the animal adventures a couple of years ago in the actual house, which was brilliant. So we're really looking forward as well to a bit of a giraffe feed. We're then going to head into the park. However, that could be very wet. Could be. Could be, we're not sure. But first, only eight o'clock in the morning, we're off to feed the giraffes. Oh yeah, yeah, we've done that. Yeah. Oh, we've aimed for that quite early on, don't we? As long as it's not raining. And they're staying indoors. Yeah. <laughs> He's loving life, it is, isn't he? Oh, okay. Loving life. He's the big one. Your head. Well, I don't you need to watch your head, Cody. That's why they lit the poles. Ah. A lot of it will end up being on your hands by the end of the session. We see it on the bark as well. They lit the bark, don't they? They'll sort of yes. chew the bark. So what they've only actually got teeth at the bottom. They've got none on the top. So what they'll do is they'll strip the bark off with their bottom teeth, grind it on their back teeth, um, and then digest it a lot more with their tongue. Enjoy it now, aren't you? So the longer we've got food, the longer they're going to be here, pretty much. <laughs> As much as I like to think they give you love and affection. It's just the food. It's just the food. Yeah. I think whilst we have got food, did you guys want a group photo? Oh, that'd be lovely, yeah. yeah. So if you stand sort of side on for me, if you you can literally stand like right up next to him, he will not hurt you, I promise. And he has just burped, so I warn you. <laughs> he always burps. Yeah, that's more leaves, mate. Yeah. That's more leaves. 
take forward, he looks to the side, he's done the all modelling. He's, he's, he's such a camera boy. I'll go down to this car. So they actually only sleep for about half an hour a day. And they don't they really lay down, do they? They sleep with their eyes open and standing up. All right, mate. So how often do they lay down? Um, so they can lay down. Uh, it's not that often. The younger boys would do it more than the old boys. Uh, just because getting that massive bodies and that all that weight up and down, it takes a lot out of them. And then when they do sit down, it's sort of like three legs in and then one leg sprawled out. <laughs> for a bit more balance. Is there any plans to breed them? Now you've had them, was it five years? I think they said so they had them. I actually have to keep them for 10 years. Oh, it's 10 years now, yeah. is it? Um, not, we don't really particularly want to breed here. Okay. Uh, purely because we'd have to get rid of four of the boys and bring in a group of females. Right, okay. Um, you can't really keep a group of girls and a group of boys. The boys just fight way too much. You've got to have the on the floor. <laughs> oh, Cody. <laughs> As much as, as much as I'd love little baby giraffe running around. Oh, I've got to say, that would be a... Probably won't happen here. So um, we'll probably end up keeping Mojo and the two younger boys for the like, foreseeable future um, and the rest of their lifetime. Uh, they have all had the stick. But uh, to uh, Honda and Keith up here are all fully attached. Oh, yeah. You can see on Keto's face is all the muffs. They are calcium deposits from fighting. So that sort of like... The other grass, he's the boss. You're probably going to live in the fight if you try. It's quite a little bit of a great So, like, if you were to see the fruit, they're having a unique event that will be different. Uh, same as the zebra. So, to me, now, like working in the past like four or five months, to me, they all look completely different. I've got my ideas in the beginning, why people got me. Is this your first year here? It is, yeah. I think it's just the best job ever. I bet it is. Just like, no them. matter how long or boring the day has been, it's like you get to go see the grass in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, you work faster than me, mate. So can you guys guess how many bones are in there next? Three. Why are bones three best? I know it's not many. Six. Six. Oh, very that's... close. How many do you reckon? How many bones are there in the middle? They have seven just like us. Um, and then here you can see that three bones are the same. Oh, what are you thinking? What do you think? Join? Yeah. Yeah. Right. How far can that sun come out? So they're one of the only animals to actually be born with horns. Um, so they've got lots of cones. So they've actually got five. That's one way you can tell that they've got the tribe grass. Mm -hmm. They've got the little bit to the top. Uh, this front one, which is like an extension of the skull. And then they've got two little lumps at the back. Hello. No. That's got the other one. Yeah, I'll see if we can go down and see that. He walks a bit more, this one, doesn't he? Boy, oh, he's a big boy, isn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. He does smell, though. It's bad. Oh. Proper domination you've got, isn't it, mate? Did you guys have any questions about that? It's lovely, aren't they? So, in the wild, uh, a good age for them to live to is about 18 to 20 years. In captivity, they can live up to pretty much like 25. Um, females do tend to live a little bit longer. And then the oldest one on, captivity, yeah. uh, on record of captivity was 40 years old. So you can have sort of very, very old ones. Oh, bless them. <laughs> Although sadly, they are endangered. So there's only about 700 rock tribe grass left in the wild. Um, and then there's about 1,000 or so left in captivity of this breed. Um, so numbers are slowly climbing in captivity, um, but sadly it is due to humans. So it's up at uh, trophy hunting. That is what we are the reason why they are going extinct. That uh, some of the money shame, actually paid for the experience today um, goes towards the conservation fund to actually helping out. Uh, we had World Draft Day back in June, so we had um, Oscar doing some painting for us. 
So what we do is uh, we paint the bottom of their hooves and they lovely big hoof print for us and some canvas. <laughs> or we'll put a uh, paintbrush in his mouth and he likes to do some painting for us. <laughs> and then we sold it off to charity. That's a great idea. I like that. Yeah. Their yeah. heads are massive. They really are. You never realise it until you're like this up close with it. Both just head it just huge. No, when we went to West Midlands Safari Park, they sort of they roam around you, and we yeah. have one sort of come in the window to to get food. But even now, I don't remember it being that big. It no, could have been a, probably a different breed, to be honest. They weren't this big, were they? No. See, they believe that there was nine different breeds, um, but because the characteristics between like two different breeds are so small, they've now realised they're pretty much going to be the same breed of giraffe. And um, so I think they've whittled it down to like four different breeds now. Uh -huh. But this here is Moja, so he's 13. Um, he's actually originally from Berlin. Um, he's actually a mixed draft. So is that why he's darker? Yes, so he's half Rothschild and half reticulate. Um, so, and then he went to Longleaf for a bit and then we've got him. So that's probably the reason why he's got that slightly darker head. Um, he's got quite thin neck and legs compared to the other boys. He's also a lot more relaxed, I find. <laughs> he's a little bit of a pushover. <laughs> and he's very, very slobbery. Aren't you, buddy? He looks asleep. That's him. So, and they eat for about 20 hours a day. So, it's a lot of these. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah, they'll have three of these buckets in the morning, four throughout the day, and two in the evening. They also have these massive tubes that we put inside the trucks. They have eight tubes a day. They also have uh, two of these are hay bales. And then, also, any browse that you can see outside, they're filled with they're free to eat again. So everything they eat to go on park, so they love stinging nettles and thorns and <laughs> because um, their saliva is so thick it like is like a coating and protection for them so they can then eat them. Uh, they love carrots and cabbage. He is especially he's a prince. <laughs> he once he knows there is carrots, he will not eat anything else. And then on their birthdays they get strawberries. They go nuts for strawberries. Strawberries. Wow. They go absolutely nuts for strawberries. But it's just way too the sugar content is really really high. So if we fed it to them all the time, their teeth would probably rot. <laughs> you can have a little nap there. So that's pretty much how they'd sleep. Just completely still, so he is awake. And it's like five minute bursts at a time. Amazing, isn't it? I can't imagine standing up for 22 hours a day. I know. Wow, brilliant. Yeah. Does anyone have any last questions before we head down? Yeah, they do. Yeah, particularly up here. I mean, when we when we saw them downstairs, they didn't seem that big. I don't know. So Moji is our tallest. He's uh, 18 and a half foot tall. Wow. And then when they're born, they're about six or seven. Yeah, I mean that's. It's a long drop, isn't it? That's quite a long drop, isn't it? it is. For so one. Yeah, they will have birth standing up, um, and it's like that drop that gives them a bit of a kickstart. Yeah. Uh, will break sort of the sack, and that can also cut the umbilical cord. Um, and then they will be up walking and running within an hour. So they are very um, sort of self going, as I say. Mm. So, like, if you do that to a baby, like a human baby, it's not a chance. No. But for a giraffe, they're like up walking around, eating within like an hour. Is he always on his own? We try to, purely because where he is the dominant one, he uh, like starts play fights and stuff like that. Um, so we have Tonda mainly. And obviously, there's balls, there's poles in here. If he was a swing, it hit his head. Yeah. That's what would happen. They eat all together outside and they can see each other. Um, it's a bit of a jigsaw getting them back in because the youngest two will come down here, they'll go <laughs> down there, and then so the gates in between can open up, yeah. but he's trying to get the right ones into the right pen, and then they all want to go down there and see his pen, and he's going to go in there and stand in the corner and not move. <laughs> they pretty much know their own pen, but there's some day they'll like, be extra mature. Just want to be awkward. But if you see Conda, he um, Oh, yeah. Yes, you have. <laughs> you have to tell them off, they are like children, so they like to fight the top of the truck. Give that a bit of a nibble. <laughs> so you've got to like slam the truck, uh, sort of hit the truck on the roof. Um, little shout out there to uh, Oscar, what he's now figured out. He stands in front of the truck, I can't drive anywhere. So I, even if I, I'll beat the horn, he won't move. The window wiper, slam the door, nothing. It's because you've got food, that's why. Like a partnership, yeah. one stands, the other ones eat. And Tom does actually now realise with the um, safari ride, because that goes under a waterfall, 
obviously it collects on the water from the yeah. top of the roof. Um, and if he stands in the same place, it will stop right in front of him. He just has to lean over a little bit to get water. <laughs> so it's like a little Uber Eats <laughs> service for us. I've got it all sussed. Oh, hang on. I need to get a picture of the boards. Yeah, mate. <laughs> and, oh, and it's like, it actually hurts your nose. <laughs> Another good reason not to go for the first one. Yes. We've got... none of the um, doors have been opened, there's actually been no stuff off the chair. Oh. <laughs> 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 you guys Enjoy that. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first time we've been for an actual giraffe feed, been up close, been up high. Um, as you probably saw in the video there, that was the lovely Megan and she was really informative, really, really good, really, really cheery, really chatty. Loved it. She definitely, definitely enhanced that VIP experience for us because we're not the most talkative people. Um, <laughs> there were also only just three of us, yes. which was brilliant. You might be able to tell it is absolutely hammering it down with rain but there's quite a few beforehand there's 10 on the next list so we're really lucky we've just literally had a private giraffe feed and that was brilliant wasn't it yep. enjoy that mm -hmm. enjoy that yeah it's really good as we said to uh, megan as well when we went to west Midlands safari park we had them come in the car and everything like that they just didn't feel that big you know when we're standing there and we've had a picture um on kurt's phone i'll probably have the picture into the video um yeah. that's just massive absolutely massive and that tongue oh 45 to 60 centimeters long i think she said yeah, I mean, you know, you're standing there with leaves, it just comes at you, it absolutely comes at you. But that's a fantastic experience. When you think that's £25 per person, you get to go in, you get an informative talk, you get to go behind the scenes, you get to go in the draft house, and then of course you get to feed them. And we had a bucket between ourselves, yeah. which was absolutely brilliant, really, really got, you know, got some good feed out of it, where there could have been up to 10 to 15 people. So yeah, really brilliant. Yeah, it was really good. Really brilliant, really brilliant. The boys have enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed it. And you know, they do a lot of VIP experiences. Some of them do seem quite expensive, um, but I guess it depends on what animals you like, to be honest. You know, if you like rhinos, you'll pay 60 quid. Uh, if you like the foxes, the little foxes and things, you'll pay 20, 30 quid to go and see them. Same with the sea lions. But that was brilliant. That was really, really brilliant. Um, yeah, I can't hype it up enough, honestly. Have a look at it. If you're staying in the hotel particularly, giraffe feed, VIP, add it on to your uh, experience. If not, £25 for the uh, for the giraffe, which I think was really, actually would have been really, really good value. Now, we are getting wet, so we're going to wrap it up here. Sorry about the water on the lens. This is UK Theme Parks. We're at Chesington World Adventures. That was the VIP tours, and we'll see you next time.